For several hundred million years, dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Some had huge teeth that ripped the flesh of their prey. There also were plant eaters, large enough to graze from the tops of trees. The dinosaurs' dominant position in the pecking order of living things seemed assured. But then, about 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs disappeared. Perhaps a meteor hit the Earth, throwing up a huge cloud of dust that blocked the sun's heat and light. Or the Earth's climate may have changed for some other reason, making the planet inhospitable not only to dinosaurs, but to thousands of other species of plants and animals. Today, animal and plant species are disappearing at a rate even faster than when the dinosaurs became extinct millions of years ago. The Earth is facing an unprecedented threat to its biodiversity, the diversity of all the living things that inhabit the oceans and continents. The threat is unprecedented because it doesn't come from a cataclysmic disaster, such as a meteor striking from outer space. The threat comes from the remarkable rise of a single species whose dominance has put thousands of other species at risk. This species is the human species. Never before has a single species had such an impact on the survival of other forms of life. Today, there are over four and a half billion people. That is more than the number you would get if you added up all the people who ever lived in the thousands of years before us. All these people need space to live in and land to raise crops for food. As the human presence expands, we crowd out animals and plants. In addition, we cause pollution and other kinds of damage to the environment. These also threaten the existence of other species. And humans pose a threat in still other ways. Our skills as efficient hunters have threatened to eliminate many kinds of animals altogether. In this program, we'll look at several case studies that illustrate these and other threats to biodiversity. In the early morning light in Costa Rica, a flock of scarlet macaws begins to gather in a rainforest tree. Their bright plumage makes them stand out like red splashes on a green canvas. Then, in small groups, they begin to fly from the rainforest to a mangrove swamp bordering the Pacific Ocean. As they fly, their distinctive cause rise above all the other noises of the forest. Scarlet macaws are faithful birds. They keep the same mates for life. Male and female fly together, sometimes joined by an offspring. Macaws nest in the hollowed out cavities of a tree. Of the chicks that hatch from the female's eggs, usually only a single chick survives. A chick's still forming feathers give only the slightest hint of the brilliant coloring it will later have. Seeing macaws in the wild is a rare experience. Most people see these spectacular birds only in a zoo or perhaps a pet store where their wings are clipped so they cannot fly. Scarlet macaws are threatened because their unusually beautiful plumage makes them highly desirable as pets. As a result, they are captured in the wild and eventually sold. But there are other threats. As the population in Central and South America grows, more and more people need ways to make a living. As a result, the habitats of scarlet macaws, the rainforests of Central and South America, are rapidly being cut down for timber and to create pasture land for cattle. Tropical rainforests are home to more species of plants and animals than any other place in the world. As these forests shrink, many species are threatened. 
Jaguars are another example. Jaguars are solitary animals. They hunt and live alone and get together only to mate. Their spotted coats make it difficult to see them in the rainforest. Like macaws, jaguars have been greatly reduced in number as a result of habitat destruction. They are also hunted for their fur. Today, very few jaguars exist in the wild. As animals like scarlet macaws and jaguars have become increasingly rare, conservationists and others have been looking for ways to protect them. Two such conservationists are Richard and Margot Frisius. They have been breeding scarlet macaws in Costa Rica, hoping to eventually release them into the wild. This is difficult, however, because birds raised in captivity often don't survive when set free. We don't know where or when or how the release will be, but that is a basic idea that we want to do. It's, uh, there are a lot of people say you can't do it and it hasn't been done. So we have to see what happens. And we enjoy them and we hope that uh, the people can also enjoy them. And we want to keep it for the future, not just for our generation, but for generations to come. While captive breeding may help, the main hope for jaguars, macaws, and thousands of other species that live in rainforests is to protect their habitats. Some progress is being made. Countries such as Costa Rica, for example, have set aside large areas as parkland. But rainforests are still being cut down at a much faster rate than they are being preserved. If they disappear, thousands of species of plants and animals will disappear with them. Frogs are a remarkably diverse group of animals. Some, like the tiny poison dart frogs of Central and South America, have vivid colors and patterns. Others have camouflaging colors that enable them to become almost invisible. Many live in ponds. Others spend most of their lives in trees. Throughout the world, however, the number of frogs and other amphibians has been declining. Some species have disappeared altogether. One reason is the same problem that threatens scarlet macaws, jaguars, and other rainforest animals. Their habitats are being destroyed. Frogs can survive only in moist places. As wetlands and ponds are filled to make way for development, frogs are losing out to humans in the competition for space to live. But they face other threats as well. Frogs have thin, moist skins that make them susceptible to water and air pollution. As their habitats are being poisoned, many are dying off. And they face another danger. Scientists have found that when the eggs of some species of frogs are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, a high percentage of them die. Ultraviolet radiation is present to some extent in sunlight. Normally, the Earth is shielded from much of this ultraviolet radiation by a chemical called ozone that forms a layer in the atmosphere. Scientists now see evidence that this ozone layer is being depleted. Since the 1980s, for example, a hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica has developed each summer. Scientists are not completely sure about the causes of ozone depletion, but they suspect that we humans are the primary reason. Ozone is broken down by chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, 